Hello my friends and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. We all know Russia has a fleet of nuclear-powered submarines, including several classes of ballistic missile submarines, also known as boomers. Theses are equipped with intercontinental submarine ballistic ICBMs and are designed to be a key element of Russia's nuclear deterrent. But due to the requirements of defense secrets as well as production technology, most of us have very few opportunities to approach and discover the production process of these nuclear missile submarines. In this video, You Can Do TV channel will take you to visit Russia's largest submarine factory to discover it. Not only that, in the last part of the video, we will also learn the world's most modern submarine manufacturing process of Saab, Sweden. <laughs> K-551 Vladimir Monomak is a Russian ballistic missile submarine of the fourth-generation Bore class, Project 955, that became operational in 2015. The submarine will be armed with 16 of the newest submarine-launched ballistic missile developed in Russia, the Balava, NATO designation SSN-32. The Sevmash base is one of the largest shipbuilding facilities in Russia, specializing in the construction of nuclear missile submarines. The base has a long history of producing submarines for the Russian Navy. The Yuri Dolgoruki and the Vladimir Monomak nuclear submarine were built at the Sevmash plant in the city of Severodvinsk, Russia. This part shows manufacturing process of nuclear submarines at the Sevmash plant, where giant underwater hull designs are assembled from specially cut out parts of strong metals. In the processing shop, railway trains deliver sheets of strong metals, which are then cut and assembled into parts to form the giant underwater hull design. This process is akin to assembling a puzzle, and once the pieces are put together, the hull is ready for further construction. One of the most critical aspects of the manufacturing process is welding. Approximately 2,000 welders work at the plant, with 37 of them being female. These welders are responsible for welding the side seams of the submarine, which make up 10% of the hull. The welding process involves creating small drops of metal using a special welding process. The welders, who jokingly call themselves minions, work under extreme conditions, and each has their own creative style and handwriting. The Sevmash plant uses advanced technology to aid in the welding process. For instance, special installations such as the Tandem North M and North S are used to make and strengthen seams on large parts with complex shapes. These machines operate at incredible speeds of up to 6 cm per minute and can process massive shells like cylinders in just a couple of days. Quality control is also an essential aspect of the manufacturing process. The plant uses special cameras that operate on the principle of X-ray to check the quality of welds. There are two such cameras at Sevmash, which produce panoramic homographs to detect any flaws in the welds. Moreover, the plant uses a gamma flaw detector, which employs radioactive cobalt to check for defects in the hull. The submarine finished its first sea trials on the 8th of October 2013 when returning from a 25-day trial at sea. On the 9th of September 2014, a Balava missile was launched from the submarine. Vladimir Monomak entered service on the 19th of December 2014. It arrived to its permanent base in the Pacific Fleet on the 26th of September 2016. The Sevmash factory in Russia employs modern technologies such as CNC, computer numerical control, lathes to manufacture submarine parts. The process of machining submarine parts by CNC lathe involves several steps. First, the design of the part is loaded into the computer system of the CNC lathe. The computer system then guides the lathe to create the part by cutting and shaping the raw material. The raw material can be steel, titanium, or other metal alloys depending on the type of part being manufactured. 
The CNC lathe machine rotates the raw material at high speeds, while the cutting tool moves along the material, removing excess material and creating the required shape of the part. The machine can produce a variety of parts, including shafts, bolts, nuts, flanges, and gears. The lathe can also perform drilling and tapping operations. The CNC lathe's computer system controls the precise movements of the cutting tool, ensuring that the final part is accurate to the design specifications. The machine can produce high-quality parts with tight tolerances and surface finishes that are essential for submarine components. The CNC lathe machining process at Sebmash Factory is supported by a team of skilled workers who monitor the machine's operations and perform quality checks on the parts produced. The factory uses multiple CNC lathes to handle the large volume of submarine parts required. The nuclear-powered submarine Dmitry Donskoy, also known as TK-208, has been in service for over three decades. Built in Severodvinsk, Russia, the vessel was launched in 1981 and has since been an integral part of the Russian Navy. This submarine is a formidable weapon in the Russian Navy's arsenal. It is equipped with advanced weapons and communication systems, including ballistic missiles, torpedoes, and cruise missiles. The submarine's advanced nuclear propulsion system allows it to remain submerged for extended periods of time, providing it with a stealth advantage over traditional submarines. It also features advanced sonar and radar systems for detecting and tracking other vessels. In the summer of 1991, the Dmitry Donskoy embarked on a historic journey that would take it from its home port of Severodvinsk to Kronstadt and back. This journey covered a distance of approximately 1,200 nautical miles and took the submarine through the treacherous waters of the Baltic Sea. The crew of the Dmitry Donskoy faced a number of challenges during their journey. They had to navigate through narrow and shallow channels, avoid mines and other underwater hazards, and contend with adverse weather conditions. However, the highly trained crew successfully completed the journey and returned to their home port in Severodvinsk. Over the years, the Dmitry Donskoy has undergone numerous upgrades and modernizations to ensure its continued effectiveness as a submarine. It has participated in numerous military exercises and operations and has served as a platform for testing new submarine technologies. Despite its age, the Dmitry Donskoy remains a formidable weapon in the Russian Navy's arsenal. Its advanced nuclear propulsion system allows it to stay submerged for extended periods of time, and its advanced weapons and communication systems make it a vital asset in any conflict scenario. The nuclear submarine, Dmitry Donskoy, is a formidable vessel that specializes in conducting combat patrols in tropical waters. This submarine is classified as a sea tank, and its primary purpose is to deliver a retaliatory strike. In 1988, the submarine had completed all the tasks assigned to it, including firing from the Black Sam missile system and surfacing under the ice. At that time, it was the largest and most unique submarine in the world. Today, the submarine is involved in testing new types of weapons and military equipment. The crew, which includes experienced sailors with 36 years of service, conducts tests on new boats built at the Sevmash shipyard. The submarine's daily routine is simple. The crew alternates shifts with four hours on and eight hours off and sails out to sea to carry out navigation tasks and prepare for missions. The crew spends about 110 days at sea per year with breaks. On Submariner's Day, the speaker congratulates all former, current, and future submariners, wishing them happiness, success, and safe travels. The submarine Dmitry Donskoy continues to play a vital role in defending the country and testing new military equipment. In the next part, we will visit Saab, a submarine manufacturing company in southern Sweden that designs and constructs a completely new generation of air-independent propulsion submarines in a brand new factory using an innovative design and manufacturing process. 
this new submarine class is just the latest in a long line of cutting-edge AIP submarines from Saab Occam's. Designing a submarine that can withstand the harsh conditions of the underwater environment and operate reliably and safely for long periods of time requires rigorous testing and evaluation of every component. To achieve this, submarine designers may use a process known as component testing, where each part is tested to its limits to ensure it can perform its intended function under extreme conditions. This process typically involves subjecting each component to a series of tests designed to simulate the conditions the submarine may encounter during operation. For example, the hull of the submarine may be tested to its limit by subjecting it to extreme pressures and temperatures to see how it responds. The propulsion system may be tested to ensure it can generate the required power and withstand the stresses of operation in various underwater conditions. Each component is also tested for its resilience and durability by being subjected to a series of repeated stresses, similar to what the component might encounter over the course of its lifetime. This helps designers identify any potential weaknesses or areas that may need to be strengthened to improve the overall reliability of the submarine. In addition to testing individual components, the entire submarine must also undergo extensive testing to ensure its overall functionality and performance. This may involve testing the submarine's ability to navigate and operate in different depths and temperatures, as well as its ability to withstand collisions or other unexpected events. The final assembly hall is a highly advanced facility that is capable of producing up to four submarines simultaneously. To ensure the highest quality and reliability of the submarines, the production process involves extensive automation and optimization. One of the key components of the production process is the powerful plate rolling machine, which is among the most powerful in the world. This machine is capable of bending thick steel plates into perfect cylinders that will form the hull sections of the submarine. This process requires a high degree of precision and accuracy, and the machine is designed to meet those standards. Another critical component of the production process is the semi-automated milling and boring machine. This machine is used to prepare the surfaces for precision welding, which is essential to ensure that all joints can handle the extreme pressure at great depth. The machine uses advanced technology to mill and bore the surfaces to the exact specifications required for precise welding. Throughout the final assembly hall, Heavy labor work and repetitive tasks have been automated to increase efficiency and reduce the risk of error. Workers are equipped with the latest tools and technology to ensure that the production process is streamlined and optimized. The facility is also designed to ensure worker safety and comfort, with a focus on creating a healthy and ergonomic work environment. Saab constantly invests in people and competence to establish the most advanced submarine factory in the world. Once the steel plates have been rolled and welded into hull sections and the frames attached, the sections are welded together to form the different main hull sections of the submarine. Fully assembled platforms are then carefully inserted into the hull. The modular platform design allows for parallel design and testing of pre-assembled platforms such as the engine room and the command center. Once a submarine is built, it is moved to a dry dock where it undergoes a series of tests and inspections. The dry dock is typically a large structure that can be flooded to allow the submarine to float on its own. Virginia-class submarine New Jersey, SSN 796, was recently rolled out of Newport News Shipbuilding's modular outfitting facility to the floating dry dock where it was floated and launched. The first step in the process is rolling out the submarine from the construction area to the dry dock. This is done using a system of rails and cranes that carefully move the submarine into position. Once the submarine is in the dry dock, workers begin the process of outfitting it with equipment, weapon systems, and other components.
After the outfitting process is complete, the next step is to float the submarine. This is done by flooding the dry dock with water until the submarine is buoyant. Once the submarine is floating, it is carefully maneuvered out of the dry dock and into the water. The final step is launching the submarine, which involves disconnecting it from the launch cradle and allowing it to float freely. Launching a submarine is a delicate operation that requires careful coordination between the crew, the shipyard workers, and the support vessels that are used to guide the submarine into the water. Once the submarine is launched, it undergoes extensive testing to ensure that all systems are functioning properly. This includes testing the propulsion system, navigation equipment, and weapon systems. If any issues are identified, they are addressed before the submarine is cleared for sea trials. The Saab Lightweight Torpedo SLWT, is a cutting-edge anti-submarine torpedo designed for use in littoral waters. Developed by Saab, a renowned Swedish defense and security company, the SLWT is based on over a century of experience in underwater systems. The SLWT is a versatile and adaptable torpedo that provides best-in-class capabilities in ASW. It is capable of detecting and tracking underwater targets and can be launched from various platforms including surface ships, helicopters, and submarines. Its compact and lightweight design enables it to be easily handled and transported, making it an ideal choice for littoral operations. The SLWT uses advanced sonar technology and a high-explosive warhead to engage and neutralize underwater threats. It is also equipped with advanced countermeasures that enable it to evade enemy defenses and decoys. Additionally, the SLWT can operate in shallow waters, making it an effective solution for littoral defense. The SLWT has been successfully tested and evaluated by various naval forces around the world, and has proven to be a reliable and effective solution for ASW in littoral environments. Its advanced capabilities and adaptability make it an ideal choice for navies looking to enhance their anti-submarine capabilities and maintain littoral supremacy.